In this video, I'm going to cover some fundamental programming concepts, sequence, selection, and iteration. We'll have a few bonus concepts at the end as well. I have some examples from C Sharp that will help to elaborate this discussion. First of all, what is sequence selection and iteration? As I mentioned, fundamental programming concepts. Sequence means you're performing a series of steps in a predefined order, kind of like having a list of things that you're going to work through or a list of items that you're going to get at the grocery store. Selection means you're going to make a decision. If it's rainy, I will use an umbrella. If it's cold, I will put on gloves. If it's warm, I will wear a t-shirt. These are all decisions that we can make that begin with the word if. And then iteration is when we're performing the same action over a collection of objects. Maybe we're making cupcakes and we have to put icing on them. So we have to take that action with every single cupcake. We have to put icing on it. So first of all, sequence. This is one of the programming concepts we use quite a bit. And in this case, we will simply execute lines in a predefined order. Here's an example from our shortcuts application demonstration, where first of all, I'm collecting some form data, putting it all together in a string. Then I take the shortcut and I add it to our collection. And then I take all of the shortcuts and I expose them to our CSHTML page. So you notice that each one of these lines gets executed once and exactly once, and then we move on to the next line, and that is sequence. So example, what do you do in the morning? Wake up, shower, get dressed, start the car, drive the car, drive the car, go to school. You do all of this, all of these steps in these order, and you do them exactly once. On a good day, that is. Now, selection is where we're making a decision. So that's where we have an if test. If it's cold, I will wear a coat. We can also have more complicated if tests where we have alternatives. If it's cold, I will wear a coat. Else, I will wear a t-shirt. If it's rainy, I will use an umbrella. Else, I will leave the umbrella at home. So there are a lot of different ways that we can do an if test. Uh, only one of the outcomes will execute. And the outcomes are bound by curlies, just like we'll have with the method. And uh, then we'll oftentimes have a comparison of some type, either double equals for number or greater than symbol, or dot equals for string, or for a Boolean, uh, which is a true false, we can just use a normal equal symbol for that. So a selection example, here's an example from our uh, project where we just start things up and we're grabbing a brand name from a URL string. In other words, the name value pairs that you see in a Git request, we're grabbing one called brand name. But we want to use a default value if the brand name is empty. So we grab the brand name and the first thing we do is we say, is the brand name equal to null? Now, equal to null means there's not anything in that variable. And also note that the equality operator in C Sharp is a double equal because the single equal sign means assignment. It means take what's on the right, assign it to the left. It does not mean equality. Double equal means equality. Does this equal this? Yes or no? If true, then our if test passes. Now this is a bit of a complicated if test because we have an or operator in here as well, which is a double bar. So an or means only one of these two has to be true for the if test to be true. Either the brand name is empty or there's something in the brand name but it has no characters in it, which is actually different from null, believe it or not. So if either of those are true, then we're going to come in here and grab the default. And we know that the if test is bound by these curlies, so this is the block of code that will run if either of these are true. If they're both false, we skip this block entirely, and we come down to the next line where we simply grab the populated brand name that we retrieve from the name value pairs, and we assign it to this view data brand variable here. So selection means we're making a decision. Selection example. If I-75 is delayed more than 25 minutes, then I'm going to take I-71 and then take 275 to cut back across. Otherwise, I'll take I-75. Why the 25-minute threshold? Well, you figure if you're downtown and you need to get to Springdale, where 75 and 275 come together, it would take maybe 22 minutes in a normal day, but if you want 71 to 275, it might take 35 minutes. So if there's a wreck on 75, then it justifies going 71 to 275, but only if 75 is delayed by 25 minutes or more. 
So that's a good example of selection. Iteration. Iteration is where we're doing the same action over a collection to a series of objects. So this collection has similar objects. They're all the same type. In other words, the objects are all cars. They might be different cars. They might be Toyotas and Fords and Chevys, but they're all cars. And we're going to do the same action to them. Maybe we're going to make sure that they have a valid license plate, something like that. Or the example I gave earlier, we have cupcakes, we need to put icing on them. We need to shake hands with every, every cupcake and put icing on it. So in this case, we're going to have a loop. This is an example from our shortcuts example, where we have all the shortcuts that everybody submitted from class. We're iterating over them or we're looping over them. You see here with a for each loop. And the boundary again is the open curly and the closed curly, which is cut off a little bit there, but there is a closed curly there. And what it means is we are going to apply this logic to every shortcut in our collection. So if you see in our shortcuts example, and this is where the snippet comes from that I was showing you, we have three uh, shortcuts here and they all look uniform. It's all first name, last name, shortcut, software, and what does it do? So to paint this table, it has to shake hands with each one of these shortcuts. We can add one more. We'll say control uh, F4, Chrome, close tab. And you see, once again, it's going to treat that like it treats all the others because it's using iteration to iterate over or shake hands with each one of these items and then print out first name, last name, keyboard shortcut, and what it does in this table that we see here. So that's iteration. So iteration example from real life. Is the semester still in progress and is it a weekday? Then we go to school. Since school happens, theoretically, uh, each day of the week, the work week, this is an action that we repeat once per day. A few bonuses here. First of all, what is a method? A method is essentially a verb. If you think of our classes as nouns, methods are what the classes do, and so they tend to be verb terms. Uh, we can take a look at an example, look at our code behind file, and you'll see that this is a method, public void get, public void on post. Uh, each of these are methods. So they have a syntax, access modifier, which is public in the cases that I showed. Uh, public means they can be called from other classes. Return type, void, means when the method is done, it's not going to return anything. And so far, that's what we see is we've simply seen void methods. Method name, method name on get or on post. And then any parameters that are passed in come in parentheses. And you see these have parentheses, but no parameters getting passed in. After that, there's an open curly and a closed curly, and the methods unit of work follows in that block. So open curly, closed curly, we tend to call it a block, and that's essentially the boundary of this method called on post. So all the body, all the sequence selection and iteration that we talked about already, that has to be within a method body or within a method block, in other words. You can't just have it kind of sitting out there in no man's land. It actually has to be in a unit of work that you can invoke. So one thing to be care careful of, though, people often confuse method and method call, especially when they're new to programming. So take a look at what I'm highlighting here. This is a method. Take a look at what I'm highlighting here. This is a call to a method or a method call. So think of it like making a phone call. My phone number belongs to my phone. And we'll think of my phone as a method. And the name of the method is my phone number. Now, if you have me in your contacts list, you have my phone number in your phone. But that doesn't mean that your phone is my phone. Your phone has its own distinct phone number, which is, which is its own distinct name. Okay, so my phone, a method. The name of the method, my phone number. What happens when you call me? I answer the phone. So calling a method is like you calling me from your phone. You're calling me because you know my method name and it's my phone number. When you dial that phone number, my phone rings. You're causing behavior to happen on my phone because you're calling my phone. So think of that analogy, just swap out the word phone for method. As long as you know a method name and it's accessible, you can call it and that will cause behavior to happen. But calling a method is different from a method itself. 
somewhere there's a method called add and we're calling it here. Right here, there's a method called on post and someone else can call that. So hopefully I made that clear. If not, let me know if I can explain it a bit more. Also variable, variables, another programming concept that we're going to have. Variable requires a name and a type. The name has to be unique. Name can't have spaces and most symbols we also can't have in a name. So all one word, you can be multiple words, just no spaces. So name has to be unique because think of a parking space. A name is like designating a parking space. And we're saying that each parking space has to have a unique name because at most we can put one car into a space. We can't put two cars into a space. If we repeated names, we'd be trying to put two cars in the same parking space. Now type. Type is how we interpret the zeros and ones that that variable contains. So you probably heard that computers speak in the language of zeros and ones. We can convert those zeros and ones to numbers. From numbers, we can convert them to something else. We can leave them as numbers if we want, or we can convert it to a letter, a color, a video, an object, a movie, a, a, any kind of other representation, a JSON field, whatever you want. So when we take a look at a variable and the declaration of a variable, we'll often see this format where we have the type, in this case it's string, and then we'll have a name that uniquely identifies it. Another example here, we have type int, which is a whole number type, and then a name. And then we have type string, which is essentially character data, and then a name. So these are some fundamental programming concepts. I hope you find this video helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.